It's my bone. <laughs> I get it, Carmen. <laughs> How would you like to suck my bone? <gasps> what did you say? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Actually, what I said was... How would you like to suck my bones, Mr. Carson? Holy shit, dude. If they could see me now, that little gun of mine. I'm eating fancy chow and drinking fancy wine. I'd like those scumball bums to say for a fact. The kind of chop chop first rate chums I attract. All I can say is, wow, well, we look at where I am. Tonight I landed, pal, right in a puddle of jam. But I said, oh, holy cow, they never believe it if my friends could see me now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Suck My Balls, a South Park review. I'm your host from the most, who lives on the West Coast, ya boy, MSG, Matthew Schaefer Gage. You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, at Matthew underscore Schaefer. I am joined here by my co-host. He is always constantly talking about something, ladies and gentlemen. This man's name is Steve Jackson. What's up, What's buddy? going on? You know, another day in paradise, baby. Yes. Yes, sir. We are here. We are ready. Did you have a fabulous uh, Christmas holiday yes. season? As you can see, I'm rocking a Christmas present right here. Beautiful robe. It's Super nice. <laughs> it would be better if it was, I don't know, maybe orange, like mm. Kenny, who just had one giant Kenny robe. Dude, that'd be sweet. Right? Oh, man. It's probably out there. Merch idea. Merch idea. Uh oh. Suck my balls, hoodies. Yes. But that's a great distance down the line. Let's talk about this episode. So, this is. The uh, technically the episode where we're going to be speaking on. If you saw the title, you're probably asking yourself, well, wait a second. Technically, Volcano was episode two, and Weight Gain was episode three. Yes, you are right. That is how it was originally aired. However, we would argue that technically Weight Gain 4000 is episode two. I mean, it was produced first. It was the sh- It was the episode that got... The show picked up because Cartman gets an anal, anal probe actually tested very poorly with audiences. So Comedy Central came back to Matt Stone and Trey Parker and said, you got to produce another episode before we even think about picking up this show, this series. So they went ahead and they produced Wake Gate 4000 and they enjoyed it. And that's how they picked up the show. So Wake Gate 4000 was the first episode to use the computer animation and graphics itself. And it w- if you go to southpark.cc.com, they have this episode listed as episode one. I'm sorry, episode two of season one. So in our minds, this is episode two. What do you think, Scoop? Yes, I agree. Since, I mean, it's the second episode that went into production. So we have to follow the production list. You know, we got, it's, we just, got, it's only fair. We have to. We have to yeah. follow the timeline that is South Park, right? Yes, we're going to go exactly. we started with the shorts, then we have to follow this concurrently. Exactly. And, and ladies and gentlemen, just so you're aware, we, we appreciate you tuning in here to the, the Suck My Balls podcast. Please follow us on Twitter at Suck My Balls Pod. You can find us on Facebook at South Park Pod. I can't believe I picked that up, bro. It was just sitting around. I don't know how we got that. You can I don't, right. that, that's so awesome. That's so good. That's a great one. And when you type in at South Park Pod, then it changes to suck my balls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's great. It changes. It's awesome. Uh, and then on Instagram, it. we're at uh, su- uh, suck my balls pod. I think that's what, no, South, yeah, suck my balls pod on Instagram. You can email us questions, ideas. If you want to maybe be a guest, if you have uh, any insight onto the South Park show. If you are, I don't know, a brand artist and you want to, you know, advertise your product or brand, and, you know, we could do a little quid pro quo barter. You share our podcast and social media with your platform. We are totally available and ready and willing to suck your balls. <laughs> so come on down yes. to South Park with us. And you can, of course, join us on anchor.fm slash suck my balls slash support if you want to support the show. 
And you can also find us on Spotify, Suck My Balls, and on Hami Media Group and Voices of Misery podcast, soon to be on iTunes and Google Play and all that when they eventually um, approve it. It takes a while during the holidays. Spotify is just instantaneous, so we're on Spotify right away. But you can find us on Hami Media Group and on Voices of Misery podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, um, Cartman's Anus, I don't know. Wherever you get your digital downloads, you can find us pretty much there. Just typing in, Suck My balls all right so in this episode as we kind of discussed uh, there to start off uh the resulting script for weight gain 4000 helped the network decide to pick up this show and although weight gain 4000 was the second episode to be produced it was originally broadcast as a third episode it was also the first south park episode created completely using computers rather than construction paper so although some reviewers criticized the episode for its profanity and other material deemed offensive at the time of its original broadcast Several others felt Weight Gain 4000 was a significant improvement over the pilot, particularly for its satirical element of regarding American consumerism, guns, uh, and as well as the episode introduced reoccurring characters such as Jimbo Kern, Mayor McDonald's, Bebe, Thank You Bebe, Thank You Bebe, Clyde Donovan, (laughs) Thank You Bebe. Uh, the show's portrayal of Kathy Lee Gifford was also the first time a celebrity was spoofed as a made fun of, if you will. Um, also, if you noticed in the first episode of uh, South Park, did you notice there was a um, an Easter egg about Kathy Lee? Who? Uh, no. So in the first one of the episode, there was a message that says, I'm not positive, but I think Kathy Lee Gifford is much older than she claims to be. <laughs> so that, that breadcrumb was left in the first episode. In the second episode, uh, if you look at the back of the chalkboard, there's some Spanish profanity. Did you see that? Yes. Chup- chupa mi titis. <laughs> 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 There's some other stuff there I don't want to butcher, but that was the easiest, uh, tra- uh, you know, t- translation or I guess uh, uh, enunciation that I could um, uh, proliferate here <laughs> on the podcast. So, uh, like we mentioned, you know, the plot starts off. South Park Elementary teacher Mr. Garrison announces that Eric Cartman is super sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I won, I won. Has won the school's Save Our Fragile Planet essay report. One of our very own South Park students has won the national prize. Wow, I knew I would win. Gosh, Mr. Garrison, this sure is exciting. That's right, Mr. Hat. The winner of the national Save Our Fragile Planet contest is... Eric Cartman. What? What? Uh, much to the anger of his classmate, classmate, a uh, Wendy Testenberger. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, of course, Garrison announces that apparently he, his essay was selected out of one million people, and that uh, Wendy initially thought she was going to win. Right? She was like, right. oh my, "She's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to win." I win. <laughs> and then she didn't. And then she gets upset. She asks Cartman, you know, what was your essay even about? And Cartman's like, uh, I don't or I, I don't know or whatever, or something like that. I forget exactly what he I said. Can't but- what did you write about, Cartman? Uh, you know, this and that. He doesn't even know what he wrote about. What was your paper about, Wendy? My paper was on the suffering of bottlenose dolphins. Hey, he? You shouldn't have written a paper about dolphins. Dolphins are stupid. Dude. Dolphins are like the second smartest animal on the planet. <laughs> ah, right. If they're so damn smart, how come they get caught in those fishing nets all the time? Oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't tell you, okay? Um, uh, that's right. And then Wendy's like, see, he doesn't even know what he wrote about. <laughs> And then, and then Cartman's like, well, what did you write about? And she's like, I wrote about dolphins. Oh, no, Stan asked, what did you write about? And she says, I wrote about uh, dolphins, right? Like saving the dolphins. And then Cartman's like, is he? <laughs> yeah, he made me know. <laughs> Your dolphins yeah. are smart. Why do they have PBAs? If dolphins are so smart, why do they get caught in fishnets? <laughs> um. So Mr. Garrison directs, uh, Mr. Garrison basically says that because of Cartman winning this contest, Kathy Lee Gifford 
will be visiting South Park and will be presenting Cartman with his award for winning the contest. And then it goes in kind of like to an inner monologue of Garrison. Candy Lee. <laughs> Coming to South Park. Um, so we get, we'll, we'll go through that here. This backstory that Mr. Garrison has a vendetta against Kathy Lee Gifford. That was basically kind of like the a plot, I would say more or less of this Mm storyline of Garrison. Right. And then the B plot was Cartman trying to bulk up and then Wendy (laughs) being the C plot. Um, 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 so, and the C plot is Wendy trying to figure out how Cartman actually won. So the rest of the town becomes a flurry of excitement upon learning that celebrity television host Kathy Lee Gifford will come to South Park. Uh, Mayor McDaniels plans to host a big event to showcase the town with hopes of furthering her own career. You know, her, her aides are like, maybe you could be a senator. Maybe you could be a state senator. Mayor, we should decorate the town square. Then we should have the chef of the school cafeteria sing a song and play up the ethnic diversity of our town. That's right. He's a black guy, isn't he? Black as the night itself, Mayor. Yes, and we can even have the children of South Park put on a little play. Kathy Lee loves children. If they're working in a sweatshop, that is. Oh! <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then Mr. Garrison is directing the rehearsals for the play with the school children. So, uh, you know, right off the bat, <laughs> Garrison's play <laughs> is so barbaric. And I mean barbaric in the sense where he's like, he actually shows what happened during the initial conquest of the pilgrims and the Native Americans. Now, in and, that scene, uh, doesn't a kid die too? Like, he starts bleeding from the head. I mean... This is the story of South Park. It begins over a hundred years ago when the noble and hardy Ute Indians lived on the land. Oh, don't they look adorable. Then, from the east, came the great white pioneers. Ah! Oh my god! You can only assume. <laughs> we have to assume that that kid is dead. Yes. Um, he's no longer, you know, no longer with us. Uh, but yes, they they they're pretty barbaric in it. Uh, it's kind of funny. Like it starts off all like very like uh, chill, you know. And they're playing, and there's some Native American music playing in the background. And then all of a sudden, like, and then the pilgrims came, and and you just see like Stan, Clyde, Kyle, they all run out. Ah! They take the guns and they're smashing over the kids' heads. <laughs> die, <laughs> die! <laughs> and you see uh, the mayor, like you know, is like Mr. She's Garrison, horrified. She's like, "Do you really think this is acceptable?" And he's like, "Well, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think was going to happen? This is what well, really what happened, Mister Man. What happened?" So, uh, you know, we also kind of learn in this episode that Mister Garrison's puppet. Mr. Hat, Mr. Hat, that's a bad Mr. Hat, Mr. Hat. Oh, Mr. Hat. Uh, he's it's basically his inner conscious, if you will. Uh, he's the the hooded little Kermit, <laughs> <laughs> right? So basically, after that happens, after he gets you know uh, dismissed from the play, uh, you know he basically gets fired for bad mouthing Gifford because she's like, do you think this would be acceptable for Kathy Lee Gifford? And he's like, the hell with Kathy Lee Gifford. <laughs> and all of, a sudden, Kathy Lee. all of a sudden there's like a crowd around that wasn't there before. And they just show up just so they can go. <gasps> and he's like, Oh my God, what did I say? And there's some guy in the background. He said to hell with Kathy Lee Gifford. Boo! <laughs> 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 All these people just freaking like show up out of nowhere. But you know, what's interesting though, is we, I, we might've glossed over this or we might not even talked about it. Did we talk about, did it happen before or after this, that, that Garrison recalls what happened with him and Kathy Lee Gifford, how she beat him? Was that before the, the um, scene? No, that's after the play scene. He, re- he recounts that whole thing, how he was on the stage and then she used two puppets and the whole dancing <laughs> behind. <laughs> she threw a boss or two. Two puppets. 
<laughs> so okay so they're at the talent show they're at the talent show and mr garrison's out there with and it's like a mr garrison full-grown head on a little boy body <laughs> so they didn't even bother to like put some hair on him which is hilarious no, no. who's there <laughs> mr orange uh, orange hey, orange you happy i would say banana or something <laughs> right that's exactly what the joke was and then the crowd's like kind of like slovenly like well, clapping, there's, right? There's one guy, it's just like <laughs> <laughs> And the judges throw up a decent score. You know, they throw up yeah. some sevens and eights, you know, there's maybe like a nine, one nine. Eight, like a seven point five, and like another eight point nine. Something like so he that. goes right, right. So he goes backstage and he's all like, I think we might actually win this, Mr. Hat. Why are you looking at me like that, Mr. Hat? Have you forgotten about all the pain and suffering that Kathy Lee Gifford caused you? M- Mr. Hatt, that, that was a long time ago, and, and I was only a child. We could have won that talent show. We could have been huge. Knock, knock, Mr. Hatt. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't say banana. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hatt, who am I win? <laughs> Uh, Kathy Lee comes out and she sings her along. If they could see me now, na 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 na, and she's got one na, puppet na, na, on her hand. And then all of a sudden, in the like the curtains open up. There's a choir of dancing like females and guys. I don't know what those what are those girls in um, Vegas called showgirls. Yes, there's some showgirls and show guys, guys and shows. <laughs> They're all behind him, right? And then all of a sudden, she pulls up two puppets, like another puppet, just to like throw it in his fucking face, like yeah. "fuck you." I can do it with two puppets, and throws her voice in two different directions, <laughs> and they give her perfect tens, and yes. that's what leads to her victory, and ultimately. Her stardom. So Mr. Garrison feels that had he won that contest, he would be a celebrity. He would be a star, and he wouldn't be stuck in the podunk town of South Park. Yeah. So he's all upset. Uh, he per- he goes into a store and he purchases a large rifle. It happened again, didn't it? Now we do things my way. I can't kill her, Mr. Hat. You're going to have to do it. <laughs> From Jimbo's gun shop. So he walks in and Jimbo is like, is this for, uh, uh, what does he say? Is this for protection? Is this for uh, uh, hunting? No, he says, this is for hunting, protection, or other. And, and he's like, other. <laughs> other. <laughs> he's like, oh, what you're going to need is this rifle gun. So he shows him the first one, go, does uh, the hole in front. This does the mine. hole. Right, you talking to me? You talking to me? And he gives him another gun. Gives him another gun, and it's the third one. He's got this one. Just has like a wood finish on it. That's the only thing that's different. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. This the one. You talking to me? I don't see anybody else around here, so you must be talking to me. I'll take it. So it's interesting. This was realistically, if you, I mean, between this episode and Volcano, they really introduced the idea that Americans love their guns, right? Yes. <clears throat> and then you know? the consumerism, the whole we're just basically sucking the teat of consumerism, pretty much. Now, did you do you think that when they initially wrote that, they had that idea in mind, or they were just like, "Fuck it, give the kids guns." <laughs> I want to say it's a little bit of both. Once they were writing it, at that first, they're like, "Fuck it, let's give kids guns," and they're like, "Oh, whoa." Look, like we got something here, you know. So what? I, I feel like that's what a lot of it is: is them just like losing the mindset, writing it, and then like, whoa, actually, look, like we we can do this. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, I think that uh, as we find out in season, um, what did, I think it's season fourteen episode four and five, which is two hundred and two oh one, I wanna say. That's the band ones. And I I sent you over that link and I know you eventually watched it, where they actually have the unedited audio of what Kyle actually says. And 
everything i learned something today everything can be solved with guns so like guns itself are a huge theme and they even call back to it later right with in the newer seasons in season 22 when the school shootings are happening so like guns have always been a big part as far as this evolution in south park Mm -hmm. you know what i mean even in the Mm -hmm. next one it goes even further or technically the one that came before this whatever however you want to view it (laughs) volcano when we get to that one jimbo gives them guns so yeah they go hunting Jimbo is around guns because he owns a gun shop. This is, of course, Stan's uncle. So, meanwhile, Cartman is excited. He's, he's, you know, he's pumped. He gets to appear on TV. They're in class. The mayor comes and visits. The mayor tells him, you know, how about you get in shape? So he's, you know, he's outside school with the his with Stan, Kyle, and Kenny. And, uh, you know, Stan's still pressuring him. Like, you know, how did you even win that contest? Why don't you tell us the truth? And he's like, I, I really, I really, I won. <laughs> I can't hear you guys. <laughs> he's just, he's over and over. He's just, I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to be on TV. We don't believe for a minute that you won that contest fairly, fat boy. Uh, stop defending your little girlfriend for writing about some stupid fish. Dude, dolphins are intelligent and friendly. Intelligent and friendly on rye bread with some mayonnaise. Dolphins are way smarter than you. If they're so smart, why do they live in igloos? Dolphins don't live in igloos. That's Eskimos. Dolphins, Eskimos, who cares? It's all a bunch of tree-hugging hippie crap. Tell me what you wrote about. I can't. I have to go home and get in shape. I can't tell you guys about that. I have to go home and work out so I can be on TV. <laughs> I'm trying to get better, you guys. And Stan's like, dude, you're going to go home and sit your fat ass on the couch and eat cheesy poops. <laughs> Screw you, hippie. No, what does he, what does he call him, though? He's like, ah, oh, man, I remember the first time I saw this, and I was like, uh, tree was hugger. Sh- no, the shit, shit, shit monger or something. Uh, Stan calls when, uh, when they get into their first argument, and uh, Cartman walks off. Stan said, when he's saying that you're going to go, you should go sit home on the couch, he calls him some. Fucking hilarious. Oh, what does he call him? Shit monster or something, dude. It's, I got to go back and watch it and find it. That was funny. We'll drop it here in the podcast. Yeah, right. You'll go and sit in front of the TV and eat cheesy poofs, ass master. So basically, Cartman does go home and he sits his fat ass on the couch. But before he does, he also does say to Kyle, Kyle says, or no, he says to Kyle, Dolphins are, Dolphins are idiots. <laughs> If they're just mad, how can they live in igloos? <laughs> and and Stan's like, dude, dolphins don't live in igloos. But you know what? Oh, you know what? Fuck, we gotta go back. What? No, it happened at the beginning of the episode. We forgot it. The rainbow line. Oh. <laughs> Did you see that rainbow this morning? Yeah, it was huge. Uh, I hate those things. Nobody hates rainbows. Yeah, what's there to hate about rainbows? Well, you know. You'll just be sitting there, minding your own business, and they'll come marching in and crawl up your leg and start biting the inside of your ass, and you'll be all like, Hey! Get out of my ass, you stupid rainbows! Carmen, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about rainbows. I hate those friggin' things. Rainbows are those little arches of color that show up during a rainstorm. Oh, rainbows. Oh, yeah, I like those. Those are cool. What were you talking about? Huh? Oh, nothing. Forget it. No. What marches in, crawls up your leg, nothing. and bites the inside of your ass? Nothing. <laughs> so Cartman asks, basically, he's sitting at home now on the, uh, on the, you know, the couch after he makes the igloo line. You know, he says, uh, igloos are just mad. Why are igloos? Cartman, dolphins don't live in igloos. Igloos, or Eskimos do. Eskimos, dolphins. I'm about to tree huggers. (laughs) Tree hugger hippies. I'm going to go home and get in shape now. Beefcake. So they go home. Beefcake. He gets, he goes home. I forget. We just like saying it, but he goes home. He starts watching TV, okay? First off, Cartman's a fucking moron, okay? Because he doesn't watch this commercial, okay? So this guy comes on the TV, he goes, Hey! Hey, you need to get in shape fast? You want to look your best? Tired of the other guys getting all the chicks? Are you tired of being a 90-pound weakling? Yeah, I only weigh 90 pounds. Then bulk up quick with weight gain 4,000. Yes. With over 4,000 grams of saturated fat per serving, its patented formula is designed to enter the mouth and go directly to the stomach where it is distributed to the bloodstream. Now available at stores everywhere. Get some today and say it with me. Beefcake. 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 
Bite! Bite! May cause irreversible damage to the kidneys and liver. Do you need to get in shape real fast? Well, now you can with Weight Gain 4000. It, it goes directly to the body in the bloodstream and makes sure that you bulk up. So say it with me. Beefcake. Beef, beefcake. Say it. Oh, beefcake. 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 <laughs> and as the nutritionist, when they came up with what's in it, like 4,000 grams of saturated fat, I was like, what? 4,000 grams of saturated fat. You can get what you need. <laughs> <laughs> um but basically like okay let's explain let's break this down first of all when scoop says he's a nutritionist he does mean that scoop is a sexy young man who's just cut he's chiseled oh stop he's, it. A, he's a fine specimen and if he lived here i'd have him breaking me in every day <laughs> anyway um <laughs> in, the gym. in the gym in the gym all silly buns um so <laughs> <laughs> so but basically uh you know if cartman first of all if you watch the commercial okay the guys is clearly showing a skinny guy okay so a skinny guy who needs to lose who needs to add on some weight now i imagine if you were training like a you know weightlifter or a bo- professional bodybuilder then that would probably work for you. Weight gain 4,000. But if you're a little eight year old boy who's already 75, 80 pounds, and a big He's fat 90. ass. He's a big fat He's ass. 90 pounds. Not yet. He'll, we'll get there. You know, he's, he's a big fat ass. And, you know, he's already heavy. He doesn't understand that you got to work out and use that. But no, Cartman convinces his mother to go to the store and get him some weight gain 4,000. So that was hilarious. Cartman's an idiot. And throughout this episode, he even gets fatter and fatter with it, concluding with him being the fattest piece of shit all around. But uh, back at school now, Wendy looks through Mr. Garrison's papers. (laughs) And this is great. Did you notice when she pulled out her paper, it said 72% nice attempt. If if dolphins are so smart, how come they don't, how come they live in igloos? (laughs) Yeah. So Mr. Garrison thought that as well, um, <laughs> or whoever graded it. Um, so Wendy does find it and finds out that uh, basically what Cartman did was he took a copy of Walden written by Henry David Thoreau and crossed out his name and just put Eric Cartman on it. And I guess the judges like, didn't care. They didn't check. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it went through a whole thing, like out of millions of people. Out of people, <laughs> million people. You- <laughs> it's just, it's just, <laughs> he didn't even bother to print up like a new cover or, or nothing. It just X to his name or yeah. photocopy. <laughs> That's why you couldn't tell him, right? I can't tell you because <laughs> he doesn't even know what he wrote about. Um, while doing so, Mr. Garrison comes into the room. And, uh, you know, he says, uh, oh, Mr. Hat, looks like when Kathy Lee gets here, she's going to get a real big surprise. And he pulls out his gun and says, bang, right? And then Wendy's like, oh, no. Well, Mr. Hat, I guess old Kathy Lee really will be surprised when she gets here tomorrow. She beat us in the talent show all those years ago. And I think we owe her for that. Bang! Um, So basically, Wendy learns that Mr. Garrison wants to assassinate Kathy Lee. Kathy Lee Gifford. What do you know of Kathy Lee Gifford? So this episode, this is a first, I I had to Google who she was. I never knew who Kathy, and and until I Googled her and I saw her face, I was like, oh, fuck, that's who that, that's who that is. She was on Good Morning with Kathy Lee and what's his, what's his nuts? Um, so she's basically best known for her 15 year run as live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Regis, that that whore. That's right. But she was she was also on the fourth hour of NBC's Today Show from 2008 to 2019. So she's been on TV basically for the last 30 plus years. Yeah, she's you know been on TV I mean? a long time. Uh, but you know what? They really didn't make fun of her too bad in this episode. Do you you know what I mean? Like yeah, they really they cut. They kind of spoofed her, but she she didn't really get hit on, like hated on. 
And uh, if you didn't notice, she uh, th- uh, is she like the only one that they don't use the actual picture of, which is the moving mouth? Hmm, you notice that point. that's what they usually do with their celebrity spoofs is they usually got the celebrity's face with random smiles or whatever it is like uh fucking uh what's his uh bucket um the ones with um ben affleck those what that one he's that was so hilarious the way that he makes <laughs> his face <laughs> ben affleck yeah <laughs> America, fuck yeah. Anyway, so after that, uh, Kathy the Gifford arrives, and most of the town attends the this great event, right? At that point, Wendy is an, outside of the stage, or she's trying to convince the boys, Stan, Kyle, Cartman, any of them, to come help her stop this assassination attempt, right? Uh, while that's going on, Mr. Garrison walks up. Howdy, Mr. Garrison. Nice gun. Thank you. Nice gun, Mr. Garrison. Thanks. Uh, Hello, Officer Bar Brady. Nice gun. Thanks. Is there somewhere in town where I can get a good, clear shot or view of Kathy Lee? Hmm. You know, I think the book depository would be a good bet. And he's, uh, like, walking through town with his gun. And everyone's like, that's a nice gun, Mr. Garrison. You got yourself a nice gun, Mr. Garrison. Nice gun. He walks up to Officer Bar Brady, Officer Bar Brady, the cop in town. We're going to get a good shot or get get spot to see. Well, first he says, uh, you know, uh, first, nice gun, Mr. Garrison. (laughs) And he says, (laughs) uh, and Mr. Garrison says, Officer Bar, oh, thanks, Officer Bar Brady. Where can I get a good shot? I mean, a good viewpoint of Kathy Lee Gifford. And uh, Officer Bar Brady's like, I think the book depository would be a good place. The book depository, (laughs) book depository. Anyway. (laughs) Thanks. So and then it gets to a scary building with just nothing around it, like the perfect sniper goes, spot. Nobody goes to the book depository. It also looks like the largest building in town. And why wasn't the book depository in any of the South Park video games? Oh, good question. Just maybe saying. once we finally get Matt and Trey on the show, we can ask him. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe so. Uh, so Guilford arrives. Like I said, the most of the town tends to the celebratory event. Now, uh, Wendy's trying to convince the boys to come help her. And Cartman's like, "Screw you, Wendy! I'm gonna be on TV." And the boys are also excited because they want to be on TV as well. And eventually, Wendy uses her pussy power. I mean, she uses her female intellect, her female <laughs> persuasion <laughs> skills. <laughs> To convince Stan to come with her and help. Stan, I can really use your help. So Stan gets, you know. And then Kyle goes, oh no, we're losing him. Oh, we're we're losing him. Yep. So he's gone. He goes (laughs) off with Wendy. Meanwhile, to get this event started, Kathy Lee Gifford shows up and we got uh, to open up the show, the opening act, Chef. And uh, Chef sings his. <laughs> his sexual Sweet song. Little. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. You know, Kathy Lee, you, you are, are a very special, special woman. woman. I, don't I don't mean special, special in a Mary Tyler Moore, Moore way or, or special, special in an extra value meal at Happy Burger way. way. No, 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 no. I mean special, like, like the, the song, song of a, the hummingbird as it gets ready to find that female hummingbird and make sweet love to it all night long. Just, Just two hummingbirds moaning and, and groaning and letting their bodies caress and touch each other in ecstasy. Oh, Kathy Lee, how I'd love to lay you down and lick every inch of your body with my tongue. What? Kathy Lee, you're my sexual fantasy. What? How about you and me? Uh, uh, thank you, Get Chef, for that heartwarming song. Sweet. Love. Thank you, Chef. Anyway, uh, Mayor gets upset, breaks it up. Basically, Chef serenades Kathy Lee with his patented sexual delicacies. Um, so just as he's about to um, fire, that is, uh, Mr. Garrison now back up in the uh, whatever the uh, book depository. You know, Kathy Lee Gifford is surrounded like by a glass jar. <laughs> Did you notice that? Like she doesn't even come yeah, out. She's like in a bubble. It's like, it's like a glass bubble or a glass vase, if you will. 
bulletproof vase, um, which I thought was interesting because if you take a just a look from a um, I don't know from a an underlining message that you know a uh, in ninety seven when they put this out even then celebrities right were afraid to appear in front of people and now in 2019 i would even venture to say it's much worse depending on what city you're in would you agree or disagree um i think yeah i think i have to agree i mean there seems to be a a bit more gun violence no yeah like you don't you don't necessarily see like you did used to see celebrities going out you know in big speeches and stuff now it's just closed off press conferences or whatever whatever you want to call them press yeah press conference is that what press releases maybe i'm throwing a press release yeah where you just have certain press and a bunch of cops or whatever well that's a conference that's a press conference but i thought you maybe you meant like a press release where you just put out a statement on your social media website that, that too that's what a lot of them do now or they'll like they'll have a homie in their house and they'll record a video and throw it on Instagram. Yeah. Like a press release. Yeah. That's what was that? that? Uh, Go ahead. You see that a lot with like just recently, uh, Antonio Brown, he never came out in public. It was all through social media, you know, like it's, you know, and then same with a whole bunch of other celebrities. It's always through social media. (sighs) Yeah. Well, social me- social media has become the the vessel in which to communicate with others uh, on a day to day basis. I'd say, I'd say, if you're fortunate enough to abstain from it, bless your heart. Please continue to abstain from it. It's not I'm something I would recommend. So it's not something I would recommend. Uh, however, uh, I, you know, we I definitely use more social media. I think for the media delivery like to actually like advertise or deliver said media. I don't really go into public forums and blurt out any of my opinions that could be considered controversial, right? Because I don't want to uh, create a, uh, a a divide with people who, uh, who are against right. or opposed for what I have to say, you know, for what I have to say. Um, so I thought that this interesting, de- this episode demonstrated that, you know, you've yeah. got the celebrity behind the glass bubble, who doesn't want to be harmed, but also is like, it's they're there, but they're not there, which is really what social media is, right? Yeah, Those yeah. people are there to connect with, but they're not, they're still behind glass windows. We can almost associate that being in that glass bubble today as them being behind their phone, making a major statement about something that they did or something that happened. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for go. sure. I mean, they were getting pretty deep there with that. With the, I definitely see that on the celebrity side. Um, so, show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they're upstairs now in the uh, book depository as Wendy and – well, this is funny though because Wendy and Stan go up to Officer Bar Brady and they're like, hey, Officer Bar Brady, we're looking for Mr. Garrison. We think he's going to kill somebody or kill Kathy Lee. Do you know where uh, he could be? And then like you just see him have like a flashback, <laughs> Officer Bar Brady. He plays the, the book whole depository. Office. He plays the whole conversation in his head. The book depository would be a good place. The book depository. The book depository. The book depository. The book depository. And then he's like, I don't know, but I'll have to put out an APB for it right away. <laughs> so he's an How idiot. stupid. <laughs> he, doesn't, he plays it in his head, but doesn't know. All of a sudden, apparently, you know, if you just turn around, because that's what they did. Wendy and Stan just turned around and there was the book depository. <laughs> so they go upstairs and they, uh, you know, Garrison's telling himself, you're going to, you know, to Kathy Lee, he's, you know, muttering to himself, you know, um, you're, uh, you're going to have to come out of your bubble sometime. And Wendy and Stan come up to try and stop him. And, um, well, Mr. Garrison first explains it's not really him. It's Mr. Hat. Mr. Hat's the one. Mr. Hat. It's Mr. Hat. Mr. Hat. Mr. Hat, children. Mr. Hat is the one who's upset. He's trying to kill Kathy Lee. And that's it. And that's and that. No, you can't stop me. Ha 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 ha. Right? <laughs> and so they. Must met- die. But she must die. So she, 
they're like, all right, well, so come on, you, you know, they're convinced. Wendy's like, no, you don't have to do that. You know, it's, I know the, I understand what happened. You should have won that talent contest. It wasn't fair that she could throw her voices in two different places. And we go back to the stage and this time Eric Cartman's now on stage. And we also did skip a funny line, but this it basically Cartman gets ridiculously fat because in the uh, auditions or sorry, the dress rehearsal, Kyle's like, dude, you're so fat that when people walk by, they say, God. Damn, that's a big fat ass. <laughs> and then somebody and then walked up. God damn, that's a big fat ass. I'm not right. I'm getting in shape. Carbon, you're such a fat ass that when you walk down the street, people go, God damn it, that's a big fat ass. No, they don't. You jealous wiggling. God damn, that's a big fat ass. Hey. Jam, <laughs> guys. You guys, you guys, I'm going to hunt. So we get to the end now. Yeah, and now. That big now we get to the end and Cartman is just huge. So huge that his arms are little T-Rex arms. His legs are little stubs. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a big blob. Right. So he's on, he's yeah. trying to get on stage to get his moment in the sun. Now the stage kind of breaks. Uh, when the stage breaks at this point, we'll see uh, Garrison eventually does get talked down. He's like, all right, I'm not going to do it. But then Stan reminds him too late for me. She really threw a voice with two puppets? <laughs> <laughs> and then that's what reignites his anger. <laughs> he must die. She must die. So they then go to shoot Kathy Lee. When Garrison goes to shoot Kathy Lee, that's when Cartman breaks the stage, thereby cutting the stage in half and propelling Kathy Lee Gifford and Kenny, Kenny up in the air. And Kenny gets killed by a flagpole which is interesting because through now head. through the head however think about this uh remember the episode uh i want to say it's asperger's no no is it asperger's rob schneider is no 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 when kenny dies and and cartman drinks the chocolate milk and they get on the plane to go and try to get his soul removed, or need about 350. When they go to get the soul removed, which we'll get there, he's on the plane and they're watching that movie. Uh, at the end, Robert Schneider eats Kenny, and in that montage, they show him die on a flagpole. Did, did, did you, did you recall that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I know I went like, right off the rails there, but basically, where I was coming was, oh, yeah, I remember was that. on the flagpole. So that's where that's where this flagpole joke started right here in this episode. That's how Kenny died. So, you know, the, the FBI, all the CIA secret agents, bodyguards, they freak out. Somebody's got a gun. We got to get her out of here. So they get Kathy Lee in the truck and they bounce. And the crowd is now disappointed, right? They're upset. Oh, and, um, you know, Carmen's like, and the, the rest of the news people are like, all right, let's go ahead and pack it up. Carmen's like, wait a minute. What, what about me being on TV? Sorry, kid. Kathy Lee's gone. We don't care. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Wendy gets up on stage and, you know, she's all like, um, I have here Cartman's essay written by Walden. <laughs> In this essay, all he did was scratch it out. But you know what's interesting? This And this, of course, what goes with the consumerism thought. Nobody really cared throughout this whole episode. Anytime Wendy tried to explain that Cartman cheated, whether it was uh, a chef or or the mayor, or, you know, anybody, I, I, I don't care, whatever. <laughs> that doesn't matter to me. <laughs> they didn't care because Kathy Lee was coming to town. So that's kind of a, an interesting thought, too, is that people are blind to mm -hmm. celebrities itself. They hold them in such high regard that it does not matter what you have to do. If you can get a celebrity there in front of you, then they're going to excuse your, you know, unmoral act. Wouldn't you agree? Yep, because celebrity power, man. That's disgusting. It is. You know, I was reading the iTunes user agreement, and it said you can't impersonate a celebrity. What? Yeah. <laughs> can't, can't impersonate a celebrity. It says that on the iTunes user agreement. Oh, well, it's good thing we're not on iTunes. Uh, well, for those wondering why, yes, I do read the user agreement. Season 15, episode one, Human Sentai Pad. You'll exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 
Man, you'll fucking you'll read fuck, those. Yeah. You'll fucking read it after that episode. <laughs> Nobody reads the agreement. <laughs> Why can't he read? <laughs> so basically, uh, Mr. Garrison, uh, you know, he doesn't, or sorry, basically nobody cares that uh, Cartman uh, cheated. They all disperse, whatever. And, uh, you know, Cartman doesn't get to be on TV. But meanwhile, Garrison gets locked up by um, Mr. Bar- Officer Barbara. You're, you're just lucky nobody got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Kenny died, you know, um, Kenny's sliding down the pole, <laughs> right in the background. So they take uh, Mr. Garrison to a mental hospital, and they're in the mental hospital, and then the kids <laughs> are talking to Garrison, and they're like, "We hope you can get better so- and come back to school soon." And, and Mr. Garrison's like, "Well." I think we have to wait a little bit longer for Mr. Hat. And then Mr. Hat pops up in a straight jacket. Well, children, I'd love to, but the doctors say that Mr. Hat needs more therapy. We can still get her. And it's like, raw! <laughs> <laughs> must kill! Must kill! Um, I would like that as a Funko Pop. If somebody can make that happen, Mr. Hat, Mr. Hat in a straight jacket as a three-inch Funko Pop, I think would be hilarious. Um, or if, super sweet. or if you can give me Mr. Hat in a um, straight jacket plushie, where like puppet, where I can stick my hand in Mr. Hat, Mr. Hat, that would be great. If you know where that is online, tell me. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know if you noticed, but I like saying Mr. Hat, Mr. Hat, <laughs> Set, Mr. Hat, Mr. Hat. Um, so Mr. Garrison apologizes to the kids for costing the town a chance to be on TV. And then uh, Kyle explains to them everybody doesn't get to be on TV. But yes, Cartman does get to be on TV. We flash over. Not Cartman. He gets to be on TV anyway. Really? On what? Obesity. Adiposity. Corpulence. Whatever word you use, it represents one thing. Being a big fat ass. We have with us today, live via satellite, Eric Cartman from South Park, who is now so obese, he can't even get out of his house. When is this going to be on the air? Is there anything you'd like to say to people out there? Follow your dreams. You can reach your goals. I'm living proof. Beefcake. Beefcake! He needs to run his ass around the block a few times. Hmm. How about a little more of that good loving, chef? Damn, woman. I just gave you sweet loving five minutes ago. Were you trying to kill me? Cartman is now appearing on a talk show on Geraldo. Um, and Geraldo starts off, he's like, obesity, <laughs> these, these, one thing is for certain, these people are fat, and then they go to Eric, and he's in his bed, and he's 900 pounds now, he's huge, and Geraldo says, he's like, is this, is this, is this on TV, or no, he says, when is this get air? And he's like, what do you want to say to all of your followers out there? <laughs> and he says, followers. He, say, <laughs> he says, believe in your dreams. You can't accomplish them. I'm living proof. <laughs> <laughs> follow, your, follow your dreams. You can't achieve them. I'm living proof. And uh, yeah, Eric, that's how that episode like ends. Just like that. Uh, or no, no, one more thing. Sorry. Chef does fuck Kathy Lee Gifford. And because uh, it clips over mm-hmm. to them in bed, and Chef's like, he needs to put his ass on a treadmill. And then Kathy, <laughs> Lee, Gifford, Kathy Lee Gifford's like, let's go again. And he's like, damn, woman, we just got done five minutes ago. You trying to kill me? So that was kind of a <laughs> uh, because the whole episode was trying to, trying to kill her. And apparently Kathy Gifford is horny for a chef. Um, but that was the full episode uh, or season two sorry see episode two or three however you want to look at it of uh, south park from season one what did you think of this overall episode mr ski jackson <laughs> it, it's got some awesome like the god damn it that's a fat ass and, you know and then um chef at the end god damn it woman i just gave you a little five minutes ago yeah, there, there was a lot of good one-liners in this episode for sure. Like, I think I watched it two or three times, and I still didn't do it justice of all the stuff I missed. Like the different times, like Cartman's outside and he's a, he's about to get, you know, he's got like the 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 t-shirt on, and they're like, Cartman, why are you wearing a t-shirt? It's fifty degrees outside. He's like, that's because I'm getting super buff. Getting <laughs> <laughs> buff. Look, his boobs are almost big as his mom's. That's right. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what he says. But he, but before he says that, he's like, I just wanted to show off my body. <laughs> I just wanted to show off my body. <laughs> beefcake! 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 Beefcake is very synonymous. This episode, Weight Game 4000, was definitely, I think, a, a cult classic episode of a South park itself uh you know you got uh jimbo being introduced in this episode as the gun distributor you've got Bebe, which uh you know she ends up becoming i guess you might say a side character in later seasons as she is a uh, one half of wendy's friend our best friend if you were part of the, the girls the girls group um, I was trying to think else. Mr. Garrison, I think, has a pretty big pivotal role in this episode, right? Um, by the way, I was watching a lot of the Christmas episodes, <laughs> and every Christmas episode where they do something and there's like a town meeting, Mr. Garrison always says, "Can we get rid of the Mexicans?" <laughs> every. We also can't forget that that they introduced Clyde in this too. Don't forget. They Clyde. did. They did. Inter- we we got the introduction of Clyde Donovan. Who uh, his mom's gonna die later in a later season? I don't want to spoil it if you haven't uh, seen South Park, but hopefully by now you have. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I think as a comeback episode, episode two, or uh, sorry, episode three. Wow, wow, we're labeling this episode two. I'm getting myself confused here. Episode two, weight game four thousand, was a great episode in my opinion, um, and I can see why this episode, this script was the one to get them picked up. Um, the mayor was also a new character in this episode. So that was another, you know, they're just basically building on side characters in the South Park universe here. Um, I would say out of uh, five balls, I would say this was a four ball episode. How would you rate this on a ball scale? I get four and a half balls. Four and a half balls out of five. Yes. From Scoop Jackson. Well, I think that's a good point to stop here. For uh, episode number uh, two, or well, I guess what this would be episode number three for us, mm-hmm. um, because we had the Jesus first Frosty, Jesus first Santa, and the Cartman gets an anal pro episode. We appreciate you guys checking out this episode as well. Like we mentioned at the top of the show, you can follow us on Twitter at Suck My Balls Pod. You can follow us on Facebook at South Park Pod. You can follow us on Instagram at Suck my balls pod you can email us at suck my balls pod at gmail.com you can also check us out on anchor.fm slash suck my balls you can check us out on spotify you can check us out on hackerhowmean.podbean.com voices of misery.podbean.com you can follow me on twitter on instagram at matthew underscore shaffer and uh, i think we'll leave you with a scoop how about a tom about tom about to take us away I think that'll do it for us. I hope you enjoyed coming on down to South Park with us. We'll see you next time. Suck my balls. 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 Suck my balls.